Hi ladies, and good evening. Good evening, I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer. We need to get close for this one. This is <laughs> a very intimate talk. Okay, so you know those days when no matter what you do, like how hard you try, how, how much of yourself you put out there, it's just not enough. And you feel like a shitty mom. Maybe like a shitty person, a shitty wife, a shitty business owner. Just shitty, shitty, shitty. I just took my shower. I'm drinking my ketones before I go to bed. I'm like unwinding. Ryan's upstairs working on stuff. All the kids are in bed. I'm taking a breather. Reflecting on the day. And what I realize is that when we feel like shitty parents, here's, here's what's going on. Okay, so the brain is like so, so wonderful at creating patterns and stories and, and making meaning of everything. Because if we didn't do that, it's like our brains would probably explode. I don't know, we would shut down. I think we'd probably shut down. We cannot possibly process everything that's going on around us. Hey Jordan, hey Jennifer, good to see you mamas. Um, so when we have this story, because that's, that's all it is. I am a shitty mom today, even if it's just isolated to today, that is a story. And today you guys, I kept, I kept, I kept feeling that story creep in. I have all the reasons that I can tell you why the big things, the big stressors were um, Ezekiel, who's going to be three in a couple weeks, has been super constipated, just having a lot of trouble pooping. And this kid, when he is uncomfortable physically, he is the he he will make it known. He screams, he shrieks, he he like full body flailing. So he's trying to poop, and it's been going on all week ever since uh, when when we all got the stomach flu and he was getting better. He's um his digestive system hasn't quite gotten there yet. So he's just a big handful right now. We're doing all the things, the probiotics, the fiber, the green smoothies, um, got like so many things. So today was a really stressful day for that, as far as that's concerned. And then the other thing is that Alexi, our second oldest daughter, she came home from school feeling really sick with a fever. So I'm already feeling like, okay, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna handle this? brain looks back at evidence at other times that we have made it through this or worse. So it's like, you got this woman, you got this. And it wasn't until this moment, this evening, about two hours ago, yep, two hours ago, where three out of the four kids either wanted or needed something from me. And you guys, like I'm one person, right? I cannot do all the things at one time. So that was the moment that I felt like a shitty mom. But see, here's the thing. In that moment, in that instant where I noticed that feeling, that like that, oh, that gut-wrenching feeling, here is what I did. And here's what now I've been retraining my brain to do through a process called the stack. I'm happy to share that. It is a deep in-depth process that, that takes you through your stories and your uh, triggers and all of that and leads to a revelation. So anyway, so what I did was separating, first of all, the facts from the feelings. Because the facts, oftentimes our brain it meshes the facts and the feelings together and that becomes our truth. When in fact, what happened is separate from how we feel about it. It might, you know, based on our story about what happened, we're gonna feel a certain way. So when <laughs> Ezekiel was asking me, she was, he was literally asking me to poop for him. I was, he was like, I gotta poop. And I said, go poop, buddy. He's like, no, mommy, do it. I cannot take a shit for you, son. Like, I cannot do that. And I was like, one thing I cannot do, I can give you milk and magnesium. I can give you some fiber. I can give you some good food, but I cannot poop for you. So he was asking me to poop for him. Um, Callie was asking me to help her with a project on the computer. And Alexi was helping me, uh, was asking me to help her find um, a thicker marker for her project. So, um, <laughs> And, and like the only kid who's not asking for anything is Vivi. God bless her soul. Holy moly. Like she has been so patient throughout this whole week. She is like my golden child right now. And um, the big kids have been super patient with Ezekiel too. But yeah, right? Jennifer, yeah, the three nagers. Holy smokes. So so that, that was a, a heavy moment where I, I had to decide who am I going to be with right now? Because the other two people are going to have to wait. They might be disappointed blah 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 story of our lives because we are one person 
So in that moment, I look, my brain is just, it's just rampant. Like, okay, here are the facts. This kid needs this. This kid want. This kid wants this. This kid wants this. It would be nice, but it's not absolutely necessary right now. And and I look at what I feel. I feel overwhelmed. I feel like a shitty parent. I feel overextended. I feel resentful. Like where the hell is Ryan? You know, I have all these feelings. But then when I recognize, when I can recognize that those feelings are coming from a story that I have about this situation. And what that story was is simply, I am not enough. I am not enough to handle all of this. And so you start to unravel that story and break it down. And what creates the shift is asking ourselves, what do we want? So in that moment when I asked myself, okay, what do I want? What do I want from this? Because the quality of our questions, the quality of our self-talk will determine whether we're going to go on a downward spiral or we're gonna actually shift and do something and be something greater, okay? So the, the thing that I, I identified I wanted, okay, here's what I want. I want, to, I, I want joy, okay? So next question, how can I create joy right now? How can I create joy? How can I be present? How can I bring the best of me to this situation? Instead of, old questions that I used to ask myself, which went something like, why is this happening to me? Why am I by myself? Basically, anytime the question starts with why, it's not very productive and it's not gonna lead to anything that shifts you out of that feeling, you know? So if you start with how or what, that's, that's a great way, that's a great little, little change to make in our self-language to shift out of those downward spirals, uh, downward spiral of emotions. So. How can I bring joy to the situation? That was my first question. And then once you give the brain that direction, it starts to search for how to make that happen. Oh, how can we bring joy to the situation? Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna laugh, we're gonna tickle somebody, we're gonna tickle Ezekiel, and we're gonna, we're gonna ask him a silly question that I know he's gonna respond to and, and it's gonna like snap him out of that whininess. But I don't create that without intention. If I stay on automatic and I don't realize what's going on, separating the facts of the situation from my feelings about it and letting that be my reality, if I don't separate that, then things, this, things don't get, they don't, they don't change, they don't shift and the same shit keeps happening and then I keep feeling shitty. And you guys, I spent the first, let's see, Callie's 11, Alexi's about to turn 10. Honestly, I spent the first like eight years of, uh, of motherhood in that trap of overwhelm, of feeling just like completely overextended. Like I could not handle this shit. Like I needed to sedate. And I'm not gonna lie, tonight I would have loved to have a glass of wine. But I know that for me, that would be sedating. That would be escaping. And I didn't want to do that. So instead... <laughs> I'm drinking my keto tea. I'm drinking ketones with a little bit of cream, okay? Because it's more delicious that way. But I wanted so badly to just sedate because I felt like, ah, oh, this was a rough day. Again, that's the story. Why do I think it was a rough day? And compared to what? Yesterday? Yesterday was really rough as far as Ezekiel screaming and stuff. But separating those, again, the facts from the feelings, and this is so simple, it blows my mind every time, but it's so hard to implement because the brain is used to thinking a certain way. So you've got to like undo that and, and create new patterns. So again, separating the facts. Facts are my kid is behind in school. She came home sick from school. My three-year-old is constipated like a just crazy little man. He is not happy about it. Facts. I cannot tend to three of my four kids at one time. The feelings were overwhelmed, feeling shitty, feeling not enough. Actually, that was my story. My story was, I am not enough. So once I could identify that and think, what do I want? How can I bring joy? And then that made a shift. So anyway, I would love to hear what it is that you're hearing in this. And, and I really encourage you to put this into practice. The next time that you feel overwhelmed, um, angry, resentful, just anxious, depressed, anything that you don't want to be feeling that does not uh, is not resourceful for what you want in your life. 
And I would love to hear from you about this, so feel free to share. And for now, I'm gonna drink some more tea. I'm gonna keep writing a song. Whoop whoop. All right, Jennifer, I see your comment, whoop whoop. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Whoever is that, is that you, Jennifer? Is that you that's here? There's one person still here. Thank you for watching. I hope that um, this is uh, helpful for you the next time that you find yourself in that pickle, feeling shitty. All right, love you all. I'll see you soon. Bye.